My name is Ebony Anoforo. I'm an immigration attorney in New York with offices in New York and New Jersey. I'm here today to talk to you about some of the benefits of becoming a United States citizen. Now, if you are currently a green card holder and are eligible to become a citizen, I encourage you to consider naturalizing. And there are many benefits that go with naturalization. Number one, you have protection against deportation. If you're a citizen, you will not be deported. As a green card holder, unfortunately, there are certain crimes that if you committed, that could put you in a situation where you could be deported. So having that citizenship protects you against that. Two, as a citizen, you can your children who are eight are younger than the age of 18 um, can derive their citizenship through you. So if you naturalize and you have a child or children who are under the age of 18, they automatically become a United States citizen because you naturalized. So that's a really important benefit for your um, children who are under 18. Also, as a citizen, you are able to petition for other family members. So if you have a spouse or a parent or even a sibling, um, as a United States citizen, you'll be able to petition for them to get their papers to come to the United States. Government jobs. Um, there are many federal jobs, great positions that are offered to United States citizens that are not available for those that are not citizens of the United States. So just naturalizing and becoming a citizen, you're already giving yourself the opportunity for some of those types of positions. Freedom to travel. Um, when you have your blue passport, you're a United States citizen, you have a lot more freedom to travel than someone who is a um, green card holder. Not that you cannot travel as a green card holder. The only thing, the difference is as a green card holder, you have to remember that you're staying within the 180 days and you do not stay outside or stay abroad um, for longer than that time period because you can be subject to public charge and some other issues um, trying to return. But as a citizen, you don't have that limitation, that restriction. So you have the freedom to travel in that regards. Also, um, as a United States citizen and you have an American passport, many countries provide um, the opportunity for you to travel to their country without a visa. So that's an added benefit as well, if you are a person who likes to travel. Um, voting. Voting is a privilege and um, something that many Americans are proud to have and have that ability to participate in. And as a naturalized citizen, you too would have the opportunity to participate and vote. This is an election year and it's a very important one for many people. Um, and those who are naturalized citizens will be able to partake in um, that wonderful privilege. So voting is a great benefit to have as a citizen. I also wanna talk about some of the requirements that you need to have in order to naturalize. Number one, you have to be at least 18 years of age um, for you to naturalize. You have to continuously be living physically in the United States as a green card holder for a number of years. And this can be either three years or five years, depending on how you received your green card. You also have to show that you've established residency in the state that you're choosing to naturalize in. So if you're applying in New York, you have to show that you have a residency in New York. You have to be a person of good moral character. That's always important, especially for immigration. Um, so you know that's definitely gonna be a requirement for naturalization as well. You have to be proficient in basic spoken and written English and demonstrate a knowledge of US history. Um, a lot of people get worried about this because they're like, I don't know so much about US history, I'm foreign. Um, it's We're not expecting you to know every detail about the United States government, but there is an expectation that you'll have some basic knowledge and you will be tested. There is a two-part test, an English language test along with a civics test. And if anyone has any questions about that specific requirement, you can always reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to speak to you in more detail about that. And you also have to swear allegiance to the United States. Um, now, people have asked me in the past, yes, if I swear allegiance to the United States, do I have to give up my own my citizenship in my own home country or denounce my citizenship? Now, the, the United States is not going to ask you to denounce your citizenship in your home country. In fact, many people do maintain dual citizenship in their home country. It's very common. You just have to make sure that whichever country you're from, they allow for you to have a dual citizenship. The United States is not going to ask you to renounce your citizenship.